Now, on Philadelphia's number one college radio station, WHIP, Rational Radio. Jai Singletary and Aron Cowan. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, thank you. This is exciting being in here. Just <laughs> yeah, have you guys ever been to this area of the student center before? Or the, the I'm sorry, the tech center? I haven't. This is kind of tucked away, so this is all new for me. So this is new exciting. New for me. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay, we want to start out with you guys real quick. Sure. Um, tell us a little bit about your platform. Uh, I know you guys, we had the debate a couple of, like a week ago, about a week ago, and um, you got to, you know, say what you were about, but it was very short. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your platform, go more in depth, tell everybody out there like what you guys are about. Sure. So Aron and I will share between this, this platform introduction. Uh, Empower to you and our platform is based off of the three pillars that reflect the student pledge, recognizing excellence, promoting inclusivity, as well as respect for the community. And we're looking forward to rolling out a number of initiatives that will benefit students. So we want to expand upon the open source textbook program that's already uh, in place as a pilot program at Temple. We want to expand reasonable accommodations for individuals with disabilities on campus, working with the DRS, Disability Resource Services, as well as holding open community forums because we strongly believe that we're neighbors uh, and we need to be good neighbors in this community to make sure that uh, the line of dialogue is nice, tight, and clear between Temple University and the community, making sure that they have a stake in what the matters that affect the both of us. Um, we also want to make sure that, that everyone's voice is heard at Temple, not just now during the election, but throughout the year. Hold us accountable. So we want to create a legislative body, a parliament to kind of hold us in check and make sure that no matter what sector of campus you're from, no matter whether you're a freshman, whether or not you're in a club, you have a voice. All right, so one of the things that you guys highlighted big, big at the very beginning was the parliament. Mm -hmm. Could you go a little bit more in depth? Tell, tell us about that. All right, so we call it a parliament because a group of owls, of course, is called a parliament. Okay. And I hate okay. cheesy puns. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. The idea is we want 40 students. We want to draw from uh, one from each of the 13 undergraduate colleges. Uh, we want 20 people from just anywhere, uh, and those be out large. So they can be freshmen or seniors, they can be in a club or not. But then what we think makes our parliament really unique and different is it has seven issues-based representatives. And these are people who are kind of experts in their niche at Temple. So we want someone from athletics, we want someone from Greek life, we want someone from the commuting community, we want someone from these spheres, multicultural, to weigh in on what issues face their sphere of campus because the people who know best what they need are the people who are going through it and we want to make sure that everyone has a seat at the table. Now what really inspired this idea because again you guys it, you dedicate a lot of time running for this campaign and obviously this is one of the things you've highlighted in your platform so uh, where did you really get this idea from and what makes you think that this is going to happen it's going to be a great success for the student body? Well. Uh, I was talking with my counterparts at uh, Pitt and Penn State, other state-related universities, and they each have this. Um, how we know it's going to work? Well, Penn State can do it. And if Penn State can do it, we can do it 27 to 10 times better. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Temple Pride right there. Temple oh, Pride. Oh, yeah. Now, how do you... How long, realistically, do you think, once if you are elected, do you think that this parliament will actually be implemented? We think the first month we're going to be uh, dialoguing with the administration, with different groups on campus to make sure that we're doing this in the best way possible, setting it up. Normally, people would be elected in the spring just like we are for this, but we'd hold a special election in October, say, uh, and then starting November, it's implemented. It's running. Mm -hmm. And by no means as it's set right now, 
this is the platform at, at its foundation. Mm -hmm. It's there are holes in it. There are going to be holes in it, but it's our job. If we are in office, it's our job to make sure we patch those holes so we can make sure that student engagement and student discussion is at an all-time high at Temple. Okay. And let's go to the uh, reasonable accommodation access. Now, explain to us what that is. Sure. Uh, can I give a little background? Too? Go for it. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I had the privilege of um, interning at the U.S. Department of Labor, uh, the Civil Rights Center, this past center in Washington, D.C., and I'd never heard of that term before, reasonable accommodations, and what that really meant. And when I thought yeah. even about civil rights, I thought about um, what it meant historically, uh, particularly in the United States. But as far as what reasonable accommodations means to me, and hopefully what it means to everyone else, is that making sure that individuals with disabilities, and that whether that be physical or mental, the ones that I was particularly looking at, observing at the Department of Labor, were physical, to make sure that they have the necessary and and I guess equipment even, or uh, the space available that they need to continue to thrive. And let's, let's put this in a temple context. So reasonable accommodation on campus we have now. Kind of, you know, the divots that transition from the sidewalk into uh, the street? Sure. Reasonable accommodation for someone in a wheelchair. Elevators, okay. reasonable accommodation in a wheelchair. Uh, bathroom accessibility where stalls are wide enough, reasonable accommodation. So things that are already in place, and we're proud to say that Temple already has, but we want to make sure we can expand upon those. We don't think this is just uh, kind of the status quo right now. What can we do? And Temple is something that's a university. It always pushes to be better. And this is one area that we believe that we can do that. So we want to work with DRS, as I've said. Uh, again, I was at the Disability and Change Symposium actually yesterday, the third annual one, right here at Temple. And I was listening to a panel, uh, panelist, student panelists and panelists uh, distinguished from other universities, uh, talking about their experience and what their universities do well, and making sure that maybe we can have the what other universities do. Per, no, one in particular with Wesleyan, a professor was speaking, and that can permeate into Temple because uh, we all know, as you guys know, and the Ronan and I knows that the student experience goes beyond the classroom. So we need to make sure that individuals with disabilities are able to thrive just as we have. And I'd say this is something that's kind of a silent issue. Almost 1 in 20 Temple students have a registered disability with DRS, and you wouldn't know it uh, walking up to one of them in your class. But this is something we know that's an underreported rate. We think it's at least double that. These are your classmates. These are you know, your teammates, and we want to make sure that everyone gets that same Temple experience that we do. Yeah, and you say like you walk around and you don't really know somebody. Mm -hmm. So... Before we go into a lot more of, more platform questions, I want to know about you guys. Like, personally, I want to know about your ticket, all the rest of the people that are running, even if they're not here right now. Explain to us, like, your personal lives so the people out there get to know you guys. Sure. Um, I hail from Washington, D.C., a little, uh, little bit about me. Okay. Um, so it's hard, you know, the jabs, what I get with Philly fans <laughs> uh, regarding sports. Uh, a little bit about me, I am I have an interest in politics, but if you're not seeing me reading the newspaper, I'm kind of an old man in this regard. I like dressing up. <laughs> if you don't see me doing that, I'm probably like, I'm still an old man. I'm listening like to Nat King Cole and the Rat Pack. I'm, yeah, I'm old school with those types of things. Um, as far as passions go and why I'm here today on this ticket, uh, I firmly believe, as as I state, I'm currently the president of Political Science Society, okay. and um, I'm. It's great there and hearing, and I think I've done a a good job with the line of communication between general body members and e-board members. But even being on this campaign trail, if you will, uh, I get to meet and talk to individuals across campus that I know I wouldn't have met before. Uh, so a little bit of I'm I'm really excited. To work with the Roan and Kelly Dawson, who's not here at the moment. She's our vice president of uh, internal services. Um, and th this, it's a special time to be at Temple. And I think with the three of us uh, and in those seats, particularly the presidential and vice presidential seats, I think will be the necessary and respectable candidates you would like in office. Is there a specific politician that you try to mold your campaign after or someone who really influenced you growing up that you have this deep love of politics? I feel like everyone who really is into the political scene always is that one person that they made them get into politics. That love of politics grew in you. Who is that person or who is someone you try to model your, model your campaign after? From a personal standpoint, it's not even a congresswoman or congressman. Uh, it's my mentor at the Department of Labor, uh, Naomi Barry Perez. She's the director of civil rights at the Department of Labor. And as far as her leadership style, she has a tenacity that 
is unmatched and she has a heart that you know again is also unmatched so i don't have a part politician in mind uh if i did yeah i don't even think i do at this moment uh, okay. there's some politicians that we it, it's a whole nother spiel sphere on the national level so yeah for me i guess uh Biden, you know, Amtrak Joe, he's he's approachable. <laughs> okay. He's a uh, he's someone where, you know, yeah, he he sometimes, you know, says things he probably shouldn't have, but he he rides the train with people. He's he's accessible. He's someone that you can just go up to and talk to and I I can only hope that that I can embody that that people feel comfortable cuz you know, Jai and I and Kelly we're students just like everyone else here. No, uh, around. Let's hear about you, your personal life. Why you wanted to? Why you think you would be great as the presidential candidate? So I grew up in Ambler, Temple Ambler. So I've okay. always kind of seen the Temple flags and known. Yeah, this was somewhere I might go. Um, I came to Temple. I didn't do so well in high school. Um, I, had, I had some issues I was working through and. Temple took me in and gave me a second chance, and I like to think I really have made made good on that opportunity Temple gave me. And I just, you know, I, I'm running because I want to make sure that everyone gets that same chance. I want to make sure that, you know, everyone knows that Temple is, you know, a place to go where it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. What matters is what you make of yourself now. At one point, did you guys know that you wanted to make this run when you wanted to make this push? It was kind of spur. I it I didn't have this ultimatum like someone is like this as a fantasy. Like I I wasn't a freshman thinking junior year I'm gonna run. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was thinking is that I want to be involved in a university that has given me so much and provided endless opportunities for me uh, beyond the classroom as well. So it wasn't maybe like two months ago where Arone spoke to me and asked me to be on the ticket. And at the time, I was a little peckish. I wasn't sure if this was for me. I didn't know the the TSG layout, and I, I asked my friends, I asked my parents, uh, what should I do? Uh, ultimately, it was a rousing jai. This is something I think you need to do uh, for your confidence, and I think this is something you need to do because win or lose, you're going to gain skills that will go beyond your four years at Temple. I'd say, so I'm in Temple Student Government right now. I'm the Director of Government Affairs. And, uh, you know, Temple Student Government does a lot of great things now. But once in a while, I'd catch myself saying, you know, I wish we did this differently. And I was, you know, I was, you know, talking with my girlfriend. And she said, well, instead of saying, well, I wish this was done differently, do it. And that really resonated with me. There you go. So I think, I think we're about time for our first break this afternoon. Yeah, I got to get into our first break. So, thank you for listening. Uh, we're going to take, as we said, we're going to take our first break. Please stay tuned. We have Empower to You in today, um, talking about all their platforms and why they should be the next presidents and ticket in the Temple Student Government. listening to WHIP Radio, we want you to know that there is a 24-7 cable TV channel bringing you great student-produced shows that are truly Temple-made. TUTV, Temple University Television, is Temple's video showcase for news, sports, documentaries, comedy, music, talk shows, feature films, and so much more. You can watch TUTV in the city of Philadelphia on Comcast 50 or Verizon 45, or go to templetv.net and click on Watch Live. Follow TUTV on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. TUTV, Temple University Television. Great television that's student made and Temple made. Hey everyone, this is Tyler from Keep It Moving. 
Be sure to tune in every Sunday at 5 for your hardcore and punk fix. Only on WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. that they care about and what they're running on for their ticket. And um, before we went into the break, you guys were talking a little bit about uh, inclusivity and stuff like that. So I wanted to ask um, a hot button topic, you know, as of late, um, but probably all the time, is uh, assault and sexual assault on campus. I know the idea has been floated around that, um, you know, rape kits should be available to be done here Mm -hmm. instead of a a student having to go to hunting park temple hospital um what are your guys opinion on that if that could be implemented um how would it work we're we're all for it um on our platform we say that uh we should implement the findings of the presidential committee on sexual misconduct which two years ago president theobald put together a group to look into the title nine allegations against temple they came back with a bunch of findings and temple's implemented some of them some of them such as a centralized sexual assault uh, crisis center on campus have not yet been implemented so we said you know we're we're all for that and uh eight nine days ago the university emailed saying that they've uh, appointed a director of title nine compliance and that they intend to uh create this uh, sexual assault crisis center so we can't really claim credit for it but uh <laughs> we're certainly you know it looks like Temple's doing the right thing here, and we're grateful to see that. Now, when when you guys are you know making your platform up and you're you have again your list of agendas, the things you want to get done, was there a certain way you went about going? What was first, second, or third? These are all equal priorities that need to get done as soon as you are elected. I, when we sat together and uh, developed the platform because mm-hmm. of the particular areas of interest that Arone has his feet in a temple that I have my feet in as well mm-hmm. as Kelly uh, we didn't when we when we brought together the parliament was uh, the meteor weightier piece uh, by no means does that discredit any other uh, initiative that we would like to put forward like the expanding the reasonable accommodations our stars revamp program that we're I'm sure we'll talk about uh, sometime this afternoon mm-hmm. uh, I 
I can't say for certain, maybe a Roan can, that nothing really took precedence over another. The order was, you know, in the student pledge, you know, uh, promote excellence, uh, diversity, and respect for the community. So we kind of, we put it in the same order because, you know, Russell Conwell said it that way, and we might as well, too. Now, Arun, you also mentioned in the first block of this program that you're already involved with Temple Student Government, and you talked about wanting to take that next leap into running for this ticket. Now, you've been involved, obviously, in this current year. What do you think some of the successes of this current Temple Student Government include, and what are the, some of the things they have missed on where you say that's one thing you need to fix? Like, what are some of the things that you've seen, definitely some success, and then some things that need to be tweaked? So the big success that we heard about yesterday at 1 p.m. was uh, we have a budget passed. Yes, right? we do. This is yes. huge. <laughs> This is $173 million for Temple this year. Uh, this is 30% of our operating budget. This is making sure that everyone gets their PHEAA grants. This is making sure Temple Hospital can stay in the black this year. This is something we've been working on for eight months. And I've, you know, as Director of Government Affairs, this has kind of been my, my pet project. So I'm, I'm really glad to see this happen. Um, we worked with our counterparts at the other three state-related schools, uh, Lincoln, Penn State, and Pitt, uh, to lobby. And I actually heard from some state senators that uh, when Governor Wolf talked to them about whether they should uh, let this, let this uh, budget go into effect, the state senators said, well, you know, we're just getting so much pushback from our constituents. They really feel strongly. So I think that just goes to show the the uh, the way that Temple student government really helped mobilize the Temple student community to get behind this. Could you have ever foreseen the amount of time it took for this to get passed? Because we know this has been not only just, a, you know, of course it's 2016 and we know the topic of conversation at the national level is the race for the White House, but the state of Pennsylvania, this is a huge issue. Absolutely. And obviously yesterday when this news broke, us in the news department and Temple students alike, obviously it caught their attention. And you being in a sense at the forefront of it that did you could you have ever foreseen that this process would be months and months dragging on i could not this this was unprecedented um you know philadelphia schools had to take out a several hundred million dollar loan just to i believe seven hundred million dollar loan just to open after winter break this is you know we thought it was bad when corbett slashed our funding and he did and we're still roughly 30 million dollars below what we had in 2010 even though we have more students doing more things but no one could have predicted this we we never thought people would play politics with you know the future of pennsylvania students mm -hmm. and it's disheartening knowing that we're students that these type of things happen but how did you work with the other schools like you mentioned you worked with penn state lincoln and pitt how do you work with those guys and we, you know, we, we all know that you guys have a t common goal, but how was it working with them? It was great. Um, my counterpart at Penn State initially reached out to me about uh, creating a, recreating a lobbying organization, the Pennsylvania Association for State-Related Students. And that was originally created in 2010 during the initial Corbett cuts and then kind of lapsed into disuse. So we all got together, uh, the four colleges we met, um, I actually, we, you know, we set set our goals. We set, you know, how we're going to do them, and we've uh, we think we've delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been it's been a pleasure working with them. Um, I'd say it's been a great team effort, and I hope this partnership continues on, no matter who is in there next year. Guys, let's talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. After browsing your um, website, and that's textbook affordability. Um, I saw something on there that um, said you guys were, you know, going to try and work with Paley and their alternative textbook program. Um, could you just explain that briefly and what that's all about? Because we could all save some money on textbooks if we could. It's, I think it's near and dear to the hearts of the four individuals sitting in the studio yeah. and <laughs> every listener right now. Uh, so as it stands, it's, it's tough to get some of your textbooks. I, again, in the political science department, we have our books, but you know, I'm, I, I sympathize with those in the science department, particularly, and getting it's those. It's tough. I sympathize with them. <laughs> so we've got to find a better way for students to have that wide breadth of information available, but decreasing the costs. Um, so Paley Library already has a pilot program to bring open source textbooks into the classroom, and. From the professors who've used it, you know, we've hearing, heard great rave reviews. You know, this is great. You know, my students love it. I love it. 
but it hasn't really caught on yet. So we want to start with the Mosaics program. Every okay. Temple student has to take Mosaics 1 and 2. The idea is if we can get those books, the books for Mosaics, available open source, then every student uh, who comes to Temple is going to experience, you know, the ease and the financial benefit of not having to shell out money for five or six books. And we think that will help uh, raise awareness of it and get it, you know, elevated in the conscience of the university. Okay, sounds good. And um, I've been holding this one back for a while, but I, you know, I, I have to let it go. You've probably been asked this a billion gazillion times. Yes, sir. Um, we might be getting a stadium not too far from here. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on the stadium, yay or nay? Have at it. So, you know, the, the elephant, it's, it's out. It's yeah, out. yeah. It's out. <laughs> So this is something even internally among the individuals, the, the candidates, and uh, those on uh, helping us, our, our staff. We will debate, we'll debate, and we'll debate, we'll debate. And frankly, we don't like what the stadium is going to do to the community. Okay. But it's not our job to necessarily, um, with the eight, that's thirteen individuals that are on our ticket, to decide for the 30 and 30,000 individuals that go to this school. What our platform is based on is empowering those students, whether you're for the stadium or against the stadium, to have a constructive dialogue to weigh the pros and cons of the stadium. This is not a black and white issue. There's nuance just to many other uh, issues that we, we discuss at Temple. But what we can't do is silence the voices of those that disagree with the stadium. There's a large base of students that are completely adamant against it, and they deserve to be heard, and I, we believe that they deserve to be heard by the Board of Trustees, and they need, deserve to be heard by the, uh, the students as well. Now, how does this dialogue go about? Because myself and Joe, actually, not only are we involved with the news department, we are both sports on airs as well. So again, this is a hot button issue. We're talking, uh, like you mentioned, it's not black and white. You have people within the Democratic Party itself uh, that are actually for and against it. You've had, we've seen Governor Ed, former Governor Ed Rendell go out in favor of the stadium. Current Mayor Jim Kenney uh, for Philadelphia is a little more hesitant. So again, this is an issue that you need to hear both sides of the argument, and you made that clear. And the first time they had the Q&A in regards to the stadium discussion, hosted by TSG with Ryan Rinaldi, we spoke to Ryan Rinaldi uh, a day or two after this event. He was nice enough to join us in studio. And I was there for, and of course, being cut short, disrupted. Uh, mm -hmm. We understand that these people want to be heard that are against it, and the people that are for it, we need to hear both sides of the argument. So to increase this dialogue, to keep it going forward, do we encourage more Q&As that happened that day, or is it possibility that these type of venues are just going to cause problems and you're not going to get much accomplished? How do you expand the topic of conversation? Right. So we think there were kind of two tragedies at that Q&A. Um, one of them was that uh, so many people who came there to get their questions answered didn't because it was cut short, because those questions and the answers were, were not really something you could hear. The other tragedy was that so many Temple students uh, felt so shut out of the conversation that they felt they had to make their voices heard by disrupting it. And we think those are both sad things. So we want to, going forward, instead of, you know, reactively holding a Q&A after something becomes a hot button topic, be proactive. We want to have monthly uh, open forums with the community, bringing in block captains who are a great structure already in the community, um, having our parliament be continually discussing these issues to make sure that these conversations are held beforehand, before it gets so contentious that, that dialogue becomes difficult. Now, how, like you mentioned, getting the students involved as well. Well, of course, the political leaders of the area have a big say in this as well. Do you reach out to your local representatives, whether it be not even in Congress? We can even talk at the city level where you have city council members. Do we? Do you reach out to them as well? Certainly, um, they represent everyone in their in their district, and and that's a valuable voice. In the same way that you know, we're running to represent Temple students. They're running to represent uh, the community and everyone here, including Temple students. So they are a, a valuable voice in, the con uh, in this conversation that should be heard. 
ultimately when it's all said and done, not that, again, it's not up to everyone here. You know, there's a lot that goes into the stadium talk. Ultimately, mm-hmm. do you think the stadium does happen? It's obviously, again, it's very tough, and I understand that we're not— At this point in time, no one has a definitive answer. But when you think, at, at some point in time, do you think there will be a football stadium, whether it be a couple years from now, 10 years, do you think there will eventually be a stadium on Temple's campus? Uh, I believe there will be. I it, it, Again, it's very tough, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I there know. will be one on campus. On t- The timetable we're not sure of, of course. Yeah, you think I, can't, I can't pinpoint the exact day, time, mm-hmm. year, but I— do believe there will be one on campus although you know what it's we'll see um my fondest hope is that you know the eagles and the link finally see the light realize that you know they did promise to be reasonable when uh negotiating with us offer us an actually fair term of contract and you know that would be ideal then you know i think everyone on both sides can agree the right thing to do is to have an affordable stadium that's already there so that, you know, it may be kind of a pipe dream, but that's that's the hope. <laughs> then you're on the side that Jim, uh, Mayor Jim Kenny needs to keep pushing, that he's reiterated the same sentiment you've just mentioned right now. Mayor Kenny has mentioned that the rent is too high for Temple. You, you're you're sharing the, the same sentiment. Too d- it's it's <laughs> too. It's too <laughs> I was hoping for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they. Uh, it was the the Eagle Stadium. The link was built with. Uh, Pennsylvania funds, yes. uh, public funds, mm-hmm. and as part of that, they promised to be reasonable in letting the uh, people of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania use it. Mm-hmm. They're not being reasonable, and I think that any elected leader would call them on that. All right, guys, let me get off uh, one more quick question before we have to get into our second break. I'm still staying on the topic of community. I saw that you guys um, it said that you wanted to tweak the Good Neighbors initiative a little bit and try and implement something um, during orientation. Mm-hmm. Um, how exactly would you try and do that? I'm, sp- I'm talking specifically about the orientation aspect. Sure. Um, what do you think needs to be done? What do the incoming freshmen need to know to you know, be a better neighbor with the North Philadelphia community? I wish Kelly Dawson were here right now. She, this is this is her area, but I will answer it. Uh, she's with us in spirit, of course. <laughs> so we need to understand as a freshman, and maybe I can do it anecdotally if if that's okay. Uh, when back in 2013, when I entered Temple's campus, it wasn't really explained to me what it meant. Although I lived in a dorm, what it meant to be a good neighbor in North Philadelphia, okay. what it meant to uh, overall treat our home for four years, but the home of many others for that it, it's been their home for generations, what it meant to make, uh, to make sure we live in a, a safe environment for the both of us. Um, as it stands with the Good Neighbor Initiative and the revamp we want to do, we want to, ins- I mean, we're college kids. We, we like things. I'm going let, let's, to, let's keep that real. We want to incentivize the good behavior. So if we make sure with the block captains, and let's talk about cleanliness, cleanliness you know, uh, off the back. Cleaning up our blocks to make sure that uh, they're as pristine as they can be. And again, this goes back to our pillar with recognizing excellence. We want to recognize those students that do uh, great good deeds each and every day. Can we incentivize? Absolutely. One way we've already addressed in our platform, through Diamond Dollars. We believe that's a simple yet effective way of making sure that students can do their part. I mean... We know there are students out there who are, you know, helping keep each other accountable. You know, did you take out the trash? You know, are you, you know, respecting people who need to sleep at three in the morning? Are you? (laughs) These are great things. And the block captains know who these people are. They know who's helping. Uh, Kelly Dawson will happily say she texts her block captain all the time. Um, So we need to empower these block captains. Getting back to empowerment, we need to empower them to to recognize people who are doing well because that's how you that's how you incentivize good behavior that's how you change the tenor of how students interact empower to you still in the studio with us we have to get into our second break of the afternoon but don't go anywhere we still have plenty of more to discuss on the other side we can react to the on
you feel like you've known your man forever. And you know his full name, his nickname, his pet names. You know his birthday. He likes old school rap more than R&B and anything his mama cooks. Yeah, you feel like you've known your man forever. But that doesn't mean you know everything about him. Of all the women living with HIV in the U.S., about 66% are African American. And most of these women got HIV by having unprotected sex with a man. The good news is more and more women are stepping up and getting tested for HIV. Women just like you who know they have to look out for themselves. Get an HIV test. Whatever the result, there are treatment and support programs available in your community. To find out where you can get a free HIV test, visit HIVtest.org slash take charge or call 1-800-CDC-INFO. That's 1-800-232-4636. If you've had unprotected sex, get tested for HIV. Take charge. Take the test. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It's half past the top of the hour and here's your WHIP sports update. I'm Ethan Miller, and this report is brought to you by iHeartRadio. Download the app for free on your smartphone or tablet to instantly gain full access to music, sports, and entertainment. The Sixers lost in heartbreaking fashion last night, 104-103, on a buzzer beater by Emmanuel Moutier. The Sixers will now travel to Portland to take on the Trailblazers Saturday night for a 10 p.m. tip-off. The Flyers will be in Colorado tonight to take on the Avalanche for a 9 p.m. puck drop. The Phillies lost... Their second straight to Houston, 2-1 to one yesterday afternoon. The Phils are now 14-7 this spring training. March Madness is back in action tonight, and local powerhouse Villanova will be taking on Miami at 7-10. Winner will advance to the lead eight and take on Kansas or Maryland. Yes, it does feel like spring today. In Center City, we'll see a partly cloudy day with a high of 72 degrees. I'm Ethan Miller, and that's your WHIP Sports Update. This is Zuri Hoffman from WHIP Radio. It is currently March 23rd, 2016, and here are your afternoon news announcements. Today, many people are mourning the loss of rap legend Fife Dog from hip-hop trio Tribe Called Quest, who died today at the age of 45 due to a long battle with diabetes. And in the wake of yesterday's Brussels airport bombing, two brothers have been positively identified as the suicide bombers responsible, while authorities are currently still searching for a third suspect. So far, 31 people have been reported dead and another 281 injured. And in yesterday's primaries, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump take the win in Arizona, while Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders succeed in Utah. Sanders also takes Idaho, bringing Sanders two wins in Tuesday's primaries. I'm Zuri Hoffman. Be sure to stay in tune to WHIP Radio, Philly's number one college radio station. WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. Time in the WHIP studio is 342. 
Rational Radio rolling until 4 o'clock. Joe Williams, John Cole here with you today. And joining us in studio nice enough to give us an hour's of their time is the Empower TU ticket running for TSG president. Uh, both of you gentlemen have been nice enough to join us this whole hour. Uh, we moved past the stadium conversation finally. I know <laughs> you, we, you were sweating that one out. That is out of the way. But I wanted to get back kind of just on the topic of the respect for community. Just beyond the stadium talk, we talked about uh, the monthly community forum. Had there been ideas about this, do you think, before? You talked about the continuous dialogue. Do you think this is not like the newest idea, but you, you think that this is accessible? I mean, the newest idea isn't always the best. I mean, mm-hmm. bringing people in to talk is something that's, you know, not novel, but, you know, it's still around because it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely need... In regards to discussing with the community, it's it can't be something where again, I wasn't at the the GA regarding the football stadium, but mm-hmm. I did, I haven't heard much respect to the current administration, TSG administration. I haven't heard too much respect uh, regarding uh, positive feedback about it's the administration mm-hmm. and voices being cut off. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, but that's that's why we're here. We need to learn from these experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to find a way to get feedback from. Uh, individual in the community that are uh, passionate about not only uh, the issue of the stadium, other issues in general. This this will not be the only uh, hot topic uh, on at Temple. There will be other ones. So if we can find a way to constructively talk about this one, you know, at, who knows what's down the road. I won't be on my four years, but, you know, you guys should believe that uh, my ear is still going to be at Temple and I'm going to want the best for this university after I graduate. Back to the platform, fellas. Um... I see something on there that's called recognizing excellence. Yes. You know, I like to be recognized. Yes. So you are excellent. You are, you're excellent. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so it says, you know. You think you just got Joe's vote right there? <laughs> there it is. There it is. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you have stuff on there, um, such as student org of the week. Um, you know, how how is that going to be implemented? If you, you know, if you just see like, if you, if you see an org like making a difference or something like that, you just put them up in the student center or what exactly does that entail so we call it owl 360 um i don't know if you ever go to morgan or the student center j and h they have tvs that are currently playing music videos which is you know great but uh (laughs) we want to we want to make sure that people are seeing you know what their fellow temple owls are doing so we want to have a scrolling feed uh just showcasing you know an upcoming event that uh that's being done by QSU or a, you know, the breakthrough in HIV that's again come from mm-hmm. Temple. We want to make sure people are seeing that. There are tons of small organizations at Temple who are doing great things, holding great events, but no one knows about them. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure this feed's scrolling on those TVs. We want to make sure it's scrolling in a banner at the bottom of your TU portal account when you go to it, making sure any student anywhere can submit, hey, you know, this is what we're doing. And uh, we'll see if we can't put it up there and make sure that people see what's going on. And one line I've kind of been using, I'll keep this brief, literally just to this one line. I'd said, with regards to excellence, promotion leads to feedback, and then feedback leads to improvement. Right, keep it going, of course. You don't need to, again, if you want to expand on that, you're allowed to. But just to add on to this conversation about success, supporting success, it says highlighting the unappreciated events. And again, you just touched on that in your previous response, but what do you think are some events that are, you know, underappreciated on campus? Jai just went to a, a seminar. Oh, yes. That one alone. I hadn't, I mean, off the back, to my own dismay, I didn't hear about the uh, this, the Disability and Change third annual uh, symposium. I had a friend text me saying, hey, it's happening in the student center, 200A, swing on by. Things and events like that need to be uh, in the limelight uh, at Temple. And not only did it help me for this campaign, but let's let's take me out of the seat of the campaign seat as an individual, as a student, to learn more about those with dis- again, with disabilities in this regard, because uh, it's a passion to me now, and learn more about and understand uh, what it means to be a student on campus and have maybe being in a wheelchair. Uh, and and just hear about their experience. There was a lot of growth just in the the two hours I was there. I, I you know it was it might be a little corny, but I you, I could feel growth. I could literally feel it as I was hearing the experiences 
of those individuals. Um, some other ones. So Main Campus Programming Board, they do great work as, uh, as they call it. They're the premier event planning org at Temple. They brought in an internationally recognized uh, poet group, and I think two dozen students showed up. These are things that we want to advertise. We want to make sure that Temple students know the opportunities available to them, know the great things that they can go to. In Jai's uh, previous answer, I liked how, you, again, both of you answered that well. I, we talk, But you kind of like goes back to inclusivity when you talk about, you know, some of these events, the underappreciated events. And something that caught my eye here is that the AAL slash Best Buddies, I saw AAL was recently out front of the Student Center for the Spread the Word to End, end the, the Word, word yes. event. It says TSU needs to help facilitate this. And this is something that, of course, you said it's near and dear to your heart and something that, of course, I think we all have a shared interest that we need to do more. What do you think TSG, how does TSG need to help facilitate this? Please expand on that. So yeah. I work with Sean. Sean's an amazing, not only is an amazing person, but he's an amazing advocate uh, for the AAL community. He's currently in TSG as the assistant auditor general, I mm -hmm. believe. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he is so passionate and so eloquent when he speaks about this. I wish he could be here. Um, we there's currently a program where they have best buddies and this is something that sean kind of uh, spearheaded but right now you know it, it it matches someone in the aal community with someone in their classes and that's great but temple goes beyond the classroom um so we want to make sure your temple experience includes going to i don't know chess club uh it makes sure you going to uh going to uh, queer prom, going to uh, you know a seminar on disabilities. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we're helping match uh, best buddies with similar interests outside of the classroom too. And I think that's something that TSG has a unique perspective as kind of the umbrella org for every organization on campus. We can help facilitate that. And the next thing down the line on your platform of inclusivity, I don't know if we touched on the ADA compliance yet. I believe we have not touched oh, uh, on Oh, that's, yet. yeah, that Please goes, expand. sure. Uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act mm -hmm. uh, signed in by, it's actually just celebrated, mm, you know, it's its 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, it says, essentially, either in the workplace or at universities receiving uh, federal funding, that we have to provide the reasonable accommodations that individuals with disabilities are entitled to. I know I mentioned that before, uh, but something again, I'm, I'm reiterating here a little bit, no, but uh, in my reiteration, it's more me emphasizing uh, to say that we don't want to just give the status quo. We want to give more than that. It's so we just we don't want to provide just enough to say, you know, so we can dust our hands off and say, okay, we did it. Now let's move on. That's not right, and that's not what Temple's about. Absolutely. And then as we continue down the inclusivity, we want to kind of give our listeners just a taste of if they have not checked online, by the way, this is accessible online, the platform for everyone listening out there. You can find it there. I'm sure you can also follow them on Twitter. Is it at Empower to you? What's that? At Empower underscore to you. We have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and even Snapchat. And we do snap back. So and they snap, oh. you feel like they snap, snap back. back, folks. <laughs> oh, don't but, give me any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, just to continue the conversation about the plat, you know, for the platform of inclusivity. And then we talked about residential life just a bit. We touched up on it, but something we've not brought up yet, and is actually you know an issue at the national stage. We've kind of seen the gender neutral housing. Uh, this is something that we've seen at the national level. The state of North Carolina passed a law yesterday, I believe, in regards to this, and it's obviously a hot button issue. Uh, I want to know how does how do you guys advocate for the LBG, uh, LGBT community and such? So we're completely for gender neutral housing, and this is something that Temple's like 90% of the way to implementing. Um, we just need to push it that last mile. So this is going to Provost Hai Lung Dai and, and getting him to sign off on it. But as, uh, as the president of QSU, Titus Knox, has, uh, has put it, every apartment-style uh, residence hall is already gender-inclusive. Mm -hmm. We just need to say, yeah, this is gender-inclusive. So it's something as easy as saying, yeah, we're going to promote this, and Empower to You will promote this. We're going to make sure that uh, every student has the the same college experience that we would give to to anyone else. Okay, and um, I guess, John, I'll, I'll keep it continuing with the, you know, kind of hard question train. When I said recognizing excellence, I thought this would be a soft segment, but uh, I'll continue on. 
One thing I wanted to definitely get at, and that's a problem with every um, TSG election that comes around, is transparency. Um, how do you guys feel like if you if you're elected, how will you be more transparent than any other of the past TSG representatives? Because I feel you know there's probably a large population of the student campus that are just like, oh well, now mm -hmm. they're elected, they really don't care about what, mm -hmm. what we have to say. They're just going to implement what they wanted to implement. Yeah. So how do you feel like you would improve transparency? Right. Um, so it starts off with uh, with you know selecting the team. So we have a great campaign team, mm -hmm. but that's for the campaign, and and I can't stress that highly enough. Other than the three candidates, every position in next year's TSG administration, no matter who wins, is open to anyone. So I encourage, no matter who wins, I encourage anyone who wants to get involved to go reach out to to whomever it is. Uh, they're, you know, we're required, they're required to hold open interviews, and that's something that I think hasn't really been made public the way it could be. But not only that, with our parliament, um, one thing that we want to draw, especially from some of our uh, sister state-related universities, is any time a bill's up for uh, debate, any time something's up for consideration, they have it on a website for at least two weeks. Okay. They tweet, they live tweet. The proceedings of their uh, legislature. Hmm. We want to make sure uh, we we certainly will have an open door policy, but not only having us accessible, but going out and talking to students, mm -hmm. making sure that we're not asking organizations to come to us, but we're sending people to go visit a general body meeting of an organization every once in a while, meet them where they are, learn what they need, because we're really here to represent students, not the other way around. Right. And if I can just this might be trivial in uh, the grand scheme of things, but uh, if elected, I want people to know our faces. Mine might not be the prettiest, but I'm a nice guy. Um, we're on radio. It's okay. I, <laughs> that's why we're not on screen right now. Yeah. Um, overall, because a lot of students don't know who their representatives are. And at the end of the day, it's their office, you know, as it stands. It's the student's office. And we need to work for students and make sure that they challenge us each and every day to make sure that we're giving them what they need to thrive and succeed. Uh, overall, I've, I've said this time and time again, but again, in my reiteration, it's more that I'm emphasizing. Uh, we're not going to get better if we're just talking about what's comfortable. We need to be uncomfortable. All the tickets that are running right now need to be uncomfortable, and that's where the change will happen. Nice. Now, um, I'm sure you guys have heard of a quote, all good things must come to an end. Uh, we're coming to the end of this interview. But before we get out of here, I just want to give both of you um, one last opportunity to, you know, pitch your ticket. Uh, to any students listening in right now, there's three other tickets they could vote for, honestly. Um, mm. And we encourage them to Absolutely. check out every ticket's platform. You can see them all at uvote.temple.edu. Be an informed voter, no matter who you're going to vote for. But before we get out of here, just give your final pitches. Why should the students vote for empower to you again kelly here in spirit but <laughs> with aron sitting next to me i've grown in the last two weeks with these individuals and they've taught me so much what it meant to be a leader a listener a better student and a better friend so taking that to a, the grander scheme these are people that i can trust and i know the student body can trust because they've already shown their dedication to temple whether it be in Temple Student Government or Kelly with her involvement as the president of the Black Student Union or myself with the president of Political Science Society. In the classroom, we're dedicated students. As far as or, <laughs> overall, we make sure that the student body is going to succeed. Again, this is the, the, our, our candidacy, um, whether it win or lose, we care about this school. We care, and we understand that students grind each and every day. So we believe that students need to be rewarded for that, and we need to make sure that students know that whoever they put in power or they put in the seat, it's their seat. Again, I can't stress that enough. It's their uh, office, and I believe if the three of us sit in those offices, we'll be willing to listen, we'll be uh, willing to care, and ultimately we'll be uh, willing to act on behalf of our student body. Aron, any final words? We're here not just to represent students. We're here to empower them. So 
it's great that you know all four tickets are, are reaching out and listening to students now, but that doesn't end after the election. And I think that's what makes us unique. We have ideas and they're feasible and we know how to implement them, but we're also going to be listening to students, not just before the election, but after it. We want students to come up to us. We want them to challenge us. And we want to make sure that not only are we representing them, but we're empowering students to represent themselves because that's the most the most impactful and powerful thing you can do is to be an advocate for yourself. Well, there you have it. Empowered to you, Arun and Jai, thank you very much for joining the show today. Thank you. Unfortunately, we do have to get out of here. The core is up next. Obviously, for John Cole, I'm Joseph Williams. Stay tuned to WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station.